can rock and roll. So I'll just do the usual where I'll talk about the market, talk about what's expected this week, some expectations, talk about some of the stocks that are setting up and why we like them in both directions. And then I can take some questions and we can rock and roll here. So I'll try to keep it nice and succinct as usual. Um, we'll just dive on in here so that we can rock and roll and let everyone get to their Sundays. Uh, so looking at the market here, had a nice little dip by yesterday. Uh, buyers actually stepped in and stayed in for once, which is definitely uh, a change in pace for the market over the last month or so. Uh, so we, we and what almost gave us more conviction on that is the fact that we made a new low here. I mean, that's just perfect market MO right there in terms of uh, making a new low, stopping people out, a little look below and then go. Uh, whether we think that this is going to be a sustained move up or not is going to remain to be the question uh, because we'll have to see where we are on Monday. Obviously, we've had no progress on debt ceiling or anything of that nature uh, through the weekend. So does the market care? Has the market started to worry about that yet? That's going to be the question. Obviously, looking at uh, some of the commodities out there, it doesn't feel like the market's uh, worrying yet. Obviously, dollar's still sitting pretty elevated up here. The dollar wouldn't be up here probably if, uh, if the market was actually worried about us defaulting on our debts. Um, so we'll see as we get closer and closer to October 18th, which is X date. Uh, that is in that's in another two weeks. So they're likely going to figure their shit out in two weeks. Um, they're not shutting down. So at that point, it's just, you know, what's the market going to do technically? So we got to be watching uh, the levels in the meantime. I, we, I wouldn't be surprised if the 50, if we did get up there this week, if it turned into a brief lid, uh, did the same kind of thing it did last time we touched that. So going into the hourly here, you know, we kind of dipped to a little step up and then uh, bounced off this 50, which was also kind of a bit of a volume note in here and then had a retracement. So uh, where we're opening up, if we open up here off of that rebound on Friday, we're going to be right uh, uh, kind of above this little dip point here from August. Um, and it's it's not the best level, so I can't really put too much stock in it. So we're really going to have to see what happens. Uh, one thing I did want to note is that uh, it, it's... <sighs> We, we've had a green day, so I'm not going to I'm not going to be flooring the buy button, but it's definitely time to watch um, IWM, especially the value plays did another little dip below the 200 day. Every time we seem to be doing that, uh, the value plays seem to rock it out. Uh, a couple of the plays I'll be showing are value plays and they are showing that strength again. So it's possible that we see value try to step in here and push out again. Got a little rocket out, got a little rocket out before the market uh, crashed back lower. Now, obviously, a lot will also be watching on rates because we had a significant little pullback in rates on Friday, which definitely helped the markets get a little bit of elevation there. If the, if the rates uh, continue to drop, then... We'll probably continue to see the market get a little bit of breathing room uh, as it reapproaches the 50 day. So, you know, the velocity of these rates rising over the last week was something that really kind of uh, wasn't wasn't helpful in terms of the market uh, staying up there. So that's really it. I think this this week uh, we do have an important number on Friday. Obviously, we have the employment situation. Uh, we have absolutely no progress in the jobs market, I'd argue, over the last several months here. I mean, we've had little trickles uh, in the right direction in terms of jobless claims and so on. But I mean, this last jobless claim report was you know, seven week lows or, or several month lows. I can't even remember how, or highs rather. I can't remember how terrible it was, but uh, this jobs number, jobless claim is going to be pretty important, obviously. Uh, it's going to be one of the fewer ones that, you know, we're getting less and less uh, jobs numbers before we have that expected taper November meeting. Uh, so, you know, if, if Powell's actually watching the jobs report as closely as they say in those labor numbers, it's going to be an important one because the j last jolts job and labor turnover survey showed that we have, uh, twice as many job openings as we do actual unemployed workers. So it's going to be interesting to watch uh, how that continues to shape up. Plus, on top of that, you've got the economic uncertainty, the stagflation concerns, things like that. Um, and then on top of that, you've got the three kind of, uh, you know, the three horsemen of the market right now. Evergrande, the energy crisis, and the debt ceiling. Um, that's kind of the three things that I'm focusing on. I don't even think market's even thinking about tapering. Um, you've got the energy crisis, obviously, that's still mostly contained in Europe and China. Obviously, those affect the supply chain themselves. Um, but they're saying that this this uh, 
energy crisis in Europe is likely going to cause a lot of closures, cause some weakness in the economy in, in Europe, uh, because uh, right now going into the front end of winter here, energy costs there are six times what they normally are. So it's going to be very, very costly to continue to heat factories and continue to do a lot of stuff like that. So you're going to see a lot of those companies get their margins squeezed. Some of them may shut down to save costs uh, on days that they don't need to. So I'm sure that's going to further constrain an already uh, constrained supply chain. Uh, and then obviously China is doing what it can to stave off over 50% of their uh, provinces experiencing rolling blackouts and energy con uh, conservation. So we'll have to see how that progresses, that there was no real new headlines there yet. Evergrande, obviously, we still have some time as well until we figure out what happens on the hard default date with the dollar bonds. Um, and then you've got the debt ceiling, obviously. I put a little video out yesterday for people who didn't know anything about it. There was uh, some misconceptions and stuff out there. Uh, again, I don't think the market's going to do uh, is is too worried about that. We've got two weeks, and I even mentioned at the end they've got some like Plan B options. Uh, for those who haven't watched it, uh, there's a couple Plan B options. I mean, obviously the president can try to declare it unconstitutional, say it's against the 14th Amendment, U.S. debt cannot be questioned, and do it, take care of it, let the courts decide it. He could also, uh, th there was a, a, an alternative that the Democrats could have used, which is a a special kind of of uh, legislature, but that takes too long now at this point. They waited too long. It, would, it typically takes three to four weeks to go through. And then there's the other one, which is my favorite, that uh, I thought was pretty interesting, is that the Treasury technically has the power to mint coins, uh, commemorative coins, and then they get to set the denomination of those coins. So people are saying if the Treasury just decides to mint a trillion dollar coin, and say, hey, this the, the denomination of this coin is a trillion dollars. They can then go to the Fed, say, here's this coin, uh, Pat, Daddy Pal. I would like a, uh, a trillion dollars of the treasury bills that you hold because the, the Fed holds about 14% of our treasury bill debt. And then there you go. The debt ceiling is immediately kind of lifted a little bit by that trillion dollars because the treasury has now regained some of that debt. And it's not inflationary because no money's been added to the system and no real money's been changed. It's just a little accounting within Congress from the Treasury to the Fed. So they accidentally gave the Treasury uh, some money power there without realizing back in the 90s uh, when they gave them that minting option. So that is an option that was actually weighed during the Obama administration. They were able to figure their shit out before then. We'll probably figure it out this time, not even need it. But there are some interesting options to watch out there. So I don't think the market's too worried about that. So anyway, I digress. Um, looking at the rest of the market, obviously, queues have been a little weaker than the rest of the market. We've seen the rates rising, so that's partially uh, to blame. Uh, we are also seeing, we are seeing rotation. You know, if you look at stocks like Apple, Apple, you know, almost pulling down to the 200. Amazon's still below its 200. A lot of the tech stocks and just stocks in general that have been running got the wind taken out of their sails. Hell, even the uh, even the vaccine names finally coming off, things like that. And you've got a lot of the uh, compressed stocks, depressed stocks, you know, stocks that are obviously down in more value. They held up relatively well. Airlines are making new highs uh, over the last couple of months. Cruise lines holding up. Uh, Mike's Live Nation, that's exploding. There's a lot of stocks out there that are actually moving and grooving here. So there is strong stuff. There's strong sectors. Uh, if the rates turn around and start going back up, I would expect the financials to kind of rally here and continue to show that strength. Obviously, energy is exploding with natural gas price rising, oil, so on. So uh, that's what we see there. I'm um, looking at some of the commodities out there. Uh, obviously, crude is about to break out for new highs. I expect that to continue. Uh, we're not getting too much else other than this energy crisis. You know, OPEC has kind of chirped a couple times. So that's one thing to keep in mind is if they decide to open the taps again, uh, get off some of that inventory, you could see it just kind of maybe uh, flatline a little bit. Um, obviously, with the dollar kind of popping out there for a little bit, we're getting a pullback as is expected. Every time we seem to get an explosion in the dollar, you tend to get uh, a little bit at least of a pullback for a couple of days. So uh, I'm expecting that to largely continue as well and wait for all of this stuff to kind of figure itself out. And then you had Bitcoin explode on Friday. So Bitcoin's continuing to show that strength. Uh, which is pretty interesting. You know, Bitcoin uh, had these nice descending highs exploded through uh, Ethereum as well, uh, both of which just really showed strength. I thought they might have come off on Friday since the market was rebounding. Uh, no, they kind of continued their strength there. So I think this is going to be a very interesting week for Bitcoin. Typically, Bitcoin gaps up over the weekend uh, on a strong time like this. So 
we'll see what happens there. But Bitcoin could definitely be in play, especially if we continue to get a little bit of a pullback in the dollar. So cryptos could be in play again as well. Um, levels just that I'll be watching as large infl uh, inflection points for the week. Obviously on the SPY, I'll be watching kind of these lows down here where we bounced from this 428-ish. Uh, it was a little bit of a bounce point back in the summer, and it's kind of where we almost bottomed out at twice now uh, to an extent. My larger resistance that I need to see us get above and hold before I, I feel a little more comfortable is going to be this 438. Uh, it was a lid for us several times over this last month, uh, and then when we got over it, it was support uh, for that ascent into the 50. And it was it was support during volume nodes uh, in the summer. So uh, once we get over that, then I'm looking at that 441, which is almost where the 50 day is anyway. So we'll see what happens when we get up there. Uh, how quickly we get up there is also going to be important. So we'll see on there. And then obviously the queues have some stacked levels as well. Uh, a little cleaner in terms of levels, in my opinion. You've kind of got this uh, 361.50-ish, 362-ish. Nice inflection point on the queues, a little bit of a lid. You've got these clean descending highs over the week uh, that you can kind of watch and see if we break. And so we'll see what happens there. And then the IWM, I just want to see that surge continue. So uh, that's where we are in terms of the market. Volatility obviously had a little bit of a pop uh, with this. But even on that downturn, that second downturn, we didn't even make a new high in here. So uh, despite that pullback we were seeing, volatility still just kind of chilling in here. It wasn't that exciting. Um, percentage of stocks trading above their 50-day is still fairly compressed down here. So the question is going to be, do they rotate? Do we see that broader market participation on the bounce? Uh, that would make me feel a little better, I suppose, if we saw more stocks trading above their 50-day. They start value buying those stocks that are trading below their 50-day SMA. Um, that remains to be seen. We're one day, uh, you know, we've had one day of green uh, in this mess uh, of the of last week. So I'm not going to freak out and be like, oh my God, it's over. Uh, we could see a temporary bounce, temporary reprieve. Uh, I need a little more conviction, a little more convincing. Uh, last thing I'm going to mention, and then I want to talk, then I'll mention the stocks I'm watching is keep an eye maybe on those closing imbalance orders. And typically, you'll, you can find those at the end of the day. Just look at what the market on close orders were, or what the, uh, the the closing imbalances were, or whatever. Because over the last couple of days, minus yesterday, I believe, uh, we were seeing some pretty hefty uh, sell on close orders, which is why we kept seeing the market tank into the close, uh, especially in those last 15 minutes, because there were large blocks of of shares being sold at the end of the day. Now, whether that is institutions, whether that's people rebalancing and getting out of strong things and rotating into small and the sweet things, who knows? Uh, but it does cause market weakness at the end of the day, and we saw that several times last week, uh, which is why you know I, yesterday was we even saw a little bit of weakness, but it wasn't that much. Uh, it's going to be something definitely to keep an eye on because if we start thinking that the smart money's rotating out, it could be interesting to watch. So uh, that's what we'll have to see there. Um, last headline that I wanted to mention, just because it's funny, is you got another Fed governor in the crosshairs here. Uh, obviously, we had Kaplan and, and Rosengren retire uh, over their trading stuff. Now you've got Fed's Clarita, who's next up in the crosshairs. Uh, this is You can't make this stuff up. Clarita was trading in and out of millions literally the day before uh, Powell came out with his bullish emergency statement on on COVID and uh, he gave kind of his bullish, you know, they've got a lot of policies under their disposal and so on. So literally the day before he's doing this, uh, you've got, you've got go fed governors just buying and selling like madmen. So that's, that's where we are, but we'll see if anything happens there. If, if we start seeing more fed governors retire, I think the market could get worried because it doesn't like uncertainty. And so having all of these fed governors suddenly ripped out and, now they got to figure out what the new landscape looks like in terms of voting on the FOMC and what's going on there. It could worry the market, but I, we'll have to see if this goes anywhere. It's only been two people so far, so we'll see. Um, just to move through some of the stocks that we're looking at, uh, and then I'll take questions. Um, Uber, obviously, is going to be one. We've had a nice little bounce here. They announced that they think that their next quarter is actually going to be profitable, so good for them. Uh, so... That's that's going to be one that I'm watching. It. We had a nice little rebound back up towards the highs here. Uh, held up at the highs fairly well, um, holding this 47. So if I zoom to an hourly, I'm going to I want to see this 47 hold personally uh, sit up near those highs. And then maybe we get a uh, run after that. Um, I also want, I'm still going to be watching the chip makers uh, after that Merck drug data came out. You know, we really saw the weakness in the in the in the vaccine makers. Um, that's what I meant. The, uh, so that Merck uh, kind of 
COVID antibody treatment was really good numbers apparently. And so you were already seeing some weakness in Myrna, BNTX, and those guys. I want to see if that continues, especially Myrna. It's kind of just out in open air now. We've gotten below this kind of major support, this 361. And so if that selling continues, I mean, you've got a lot of room until the 200. Uh, maybe you get a little bit of a bounce at psychological $300 or so. But at this point, we're seeing some nice steady selling in this one. Didn't really bounce it. They, they had some ascending lows here in the close, but it immediately in the after hours kind of took those out. So I want to see if there's some follow through on the downside with these two. Uh, they also haven't been getting favorable rulings in terms of uh, the booster shots, things like that. So a lot of the hype uh, for continued money for these guys is kind of slowly kind of been leaked out. So they need a headline at this point, in my opinion, if they're if that hype is going to return. So I want to see if these two can continue uh, their selling personally. Um, Netflix has been holding up a hell of a lot better than pretty much every tech stock out there. It's actually quite impressive to me uh, to see Netflix suddenly show this life because prior to this run that we started in August, I mean, this is what Netflix looked like. It was terrible. It was ugly. It was gross. It, you know, it was good day trading on action days, you know, when it had headlines. But, you know, while the market was soaring, Netflix was doing this. And now you suddenly have people uh, pushing through Netflix and it's held its 20 day fairly well. So we're sitting up here at the highs. If the market continues to rebound, uh, to Netflix might just continue to, to, to rock it. It doesn't matter if it's overvalued, apparently, or, or uh, overperforming, rather. So we'll see uh, what happens with Netflix, but I'm going to watch it at these highs, see uh, if we get a breakout, if the market continues, uh, see what happens there. I know Mike is watching Airbnb. Uh, did have a nice little green day yesterday, bounced off the 20-day. The 200-day did just start getting calculated. When they just start getting calculated like that, they may not be as hefty uh, of a level, but we'll see uh, what it ends up doing if it does test that. But I know Mike's looking for the continuation now through. We do have nice ascending lows here over the last month or two uh, from these lows. If I kind of draw the line, it almost touches perfectly several times now. So I do like those as kind of a trailing stop on you right now. If uh, I think that's probably what he's using as well. Obviously, I mentioned his Live Nation. Live Nation had a hell of a breakout. I mean, this is a perfect technical breakout aside from it being a value reopening play uh, that's getting a little bit of buying in here. It's It had a really nice strong day uh, on Friday. If I go to a weekly here, uh, you'll see it looks pretty strong on the weekly as well. You had nice ascending lows. We held the 20 day and now we're bursting out. So I want to see continuation on this. He might be, he might look for a pullback to see if we get something or see if we get any kind of capitulation up there. But uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, even from a day trader uh, yesterday was pretty clean and steady action. So uh, it looks it looks relatively good regardless. Um, he's watching CWH Camping World Holdings. Uh, technicals on this one are nice because it's it's held the 200 day very very well. Held the 200, held the 200, held the 200. Now we're sitting up here, kind of at this little lid here for September, this September high. So I think if this one breaks through and continues, you could get a nice little pop. Uh, maybe you see a little bit of resistance at this 44, but then after that, it's got a little room to run. Uh, if that one continues as well, he's watching ISEE. -E. I don't know enough about this stock, um, but just when I was looking at it after he announced it to me uh, or, or showed it to me before the meeting, uh, I, I like that, you know, we kind of broke out here, failed the breakout. Now we're returning back up here. I'm definitely more going to be and personally would be more of a wait and see if we can break this, because then if we don't, then it feels like it's setting up a head and shoulders. But, you know, we'll see if we can get through these highs. Um, it could be one uh, to watch if it does. I know he's still watching his affirm. Um, volume's kind of descending on this one, so be careful. If if the volume continues to drop off, it just might be kind of boring. Um, but when it runs, it really does take off. So I think he's just setting some alerts near the highs and, and holding off on that one. Uh, apps held the 200-day very nicely. We had this nice little wedge breakout on it that we talked about. I think it was two weeks ago. Nice breakout through the 200. Well, since the market weakness, so we actually pulled back, held this level really well. So now you've got a really nice manageable uh, risk against these lows, which also almost coincides with a little resistance over here. And so now what we want to see is us return back up here and continue to push through. Um, I'm not worried if the market rolls over with this one, just because it's clearly kind of trading on its own anyway. Um, you know, it's got a little bit of influence on the market, but it was compressed below the market while the market was soaring anyway. So I think that this one could go regardless. So we'll have to see. Um, obviously, some of the reopening plays continue to look good. Southwest. 
uh, I alluded to broke through the 200 day. I mean, you could pick pretty much any airline in the in the bunch. UAL uh, broke through this important 50. It's $50, so it's psychological. It's the 200 day, and it's a bit of an inflection point on this stock. So that's a pretty nice level. We just broke it for the first time, so maybe it needs some time to confirm. We'll see. Uh, American Airlines was a little stronger uh, already above the 200 day, but you've got a number of airlines you could watch Hawaiian Air over the 200 day, uh, Alaskan Air over the 200 day, uh, or just look at the ETF jets, which is pushing through. So airlines kind of getting that rotation still continuing to see it. Cruise lines a little messy for me. Uh, I don't like the gap in the spinning tops that we're doing up here. So I need to let this one develop a little bit. It's not as clean as it was in here for that breakout, but I'll keep an eye on them just in case. Uh, and CLH, I suppose, looks a little cleaner. Uh, so that's those. Um, LVS, I still like LVS. I really like these casino plays. This is a nice, clean, tight consolidation we're doing in here. We just had a little bit of a look below here. So now I want to see if maybe if we break these highs, I think you could at least maybe go for a gap fill on this. Uh, that's going to be something I'm watching. You could also play win. Same kind of deal. This one has some uh, nice ascending lows from the lows here that maybe you could watch as well. Um, and then you've got a nice uh, gap at psychological hundred dollar level. So I might go for like a, you know, 12 point, 11 point play on this if it does break and if it looks relatively strong, but they're holding, they're holding pretty well. Uh, they just, wind just filled this gap from way back here from the 52 weeks. So that's a nice little level as well. So uh, they're setting up pretty nice technically for me. Um, I'll still watch Roku. I, I think it's still overvalued. I think we'll probably long-term see it drop, but I need to see it drop this, some of these lows in here first. Uh, if I go to a weekly, you'll see it's pretty, pretty elevated up here still. Almost looks like it just did a double top pattern, but it's not a double top until it confirms, until it actually breaks, uh, obviously. But I do like that we're below the 200-day. We're below this, uh, this consolidation down here. I'll see how it continues. The market might bail it out. We'll see. Um, I'm still not touching China plays, obviously. Alibaba made new 52-week lows yesterday. Still selling off. Uh, you know, compound the China government issues with the the energy issues and everything else they're seeing. Uh, they're just not looking good. JD breaking for lows here. Um, you could go through pretty much any uh, any any play. Neo is consolidating at the lows. Just China plays in general really just still weak. Not worth uh, my time or money. Um, I'll watch a couple other commodities. So you've got the commodity prices soaring again, at least in the energy sector. So now I want to see if some of these others uh, start going again. We recently saw uranium run when it had the uh, the fund buying all of the the physical uranium trusts. Uh, so now we just had a 50% retracement uh, if you're doing Fibonacci's, which is beautiful. A uh, nice little technical play there. Uh, and it filled this gap. And now we're kind of basing in here. So I do really like this action that we're seeing. Um, we'll need some confirmation that it's going to hold that. You could trade whatever you want. URNM, URA, UUU, whatever. Uh, but they're all feeling like they're basing a little bit for maybe now a second leg. Uh, maybe you see energy uh, uranium prices go up. I don't know how easy it is for the energy companies to pivot to using uranium necessarily, but uh, I do like uh, how they're setting up at least. And lithium. I'll keep an eye on lithium because we are basing in here. Uh, if it reapproaches these highs and starts breaking, maybe we get something on some of these like SQM uh, had some descending highs that we're still holding above. Kind of got some secondary descending highs now. If it gets above some of these resistance, maybe we see another play in lithium. I'm not super like I'm not jumping on that, but we'll see. Um, or you could just play other energy plays like uh, Devon Energy. I know like Michael and a couple of you played this. This one still looks really good, really strong, broke through highs. Um, it's been really clean technically as well for the most part. So. I'm not going to be uh, upset if this one sets up another buy or another play off of this, maybe through these uh, Friday highs or something. I'll continue to play these for short bursts. Uh, I know Mike is watching Apache as well. You pick, pick and choose whatever uh, energy play is your favorite. If CEI comes back in favor, who knows? Um, but it's kind of cooled off a little bit with volume. Um, but you could play any energy play that looks interesting to you. Um, I like this SI technically. It's a financial. They're in, they're in uh, stable coin and, and crypto in general. So they're kind of benefiting also from the, the pop we had in crypto. Like the technicals, held that psychological 100. Tight, 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 tight moving averages. Breaking through this resistance. I want to see this one continue. Uh, I saw an interesting little note on it from like Morgan Stanley or something. That's how I got on my, on my radar there. Um, obviously, I'll watch Merck from a day trading side of things. 
Uh, I, I'm not going to buy it up here after a gap like that, but I like the levels we're putting in. Definitely this would be like my trailing level. Uh, continuation through like 83 would be interesting to me as well. So I'll play it in either direction. Looks like it was a little indecisive yesterday, which makes whatever happens this week more important for it. Um, amplitude, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to mention it again. You know, fool me once, shame on, on you. Um, it had this nasty drop out here, but we recovered and finished at the highs here. Recent IPO. Um, got a little thinner, so you know we'll see how interesting it is. But if it breaks here, uh, this could be a decent little swing for me. Uh, tech stock, te uh, new recent IPO, fresh levels. Uh, they keep dip buying it. We're still above the IPO price technically, so it could have a run if it breaks through those highs. Um, but you know it's been a little little naughty so far, so we'll have to see what happens. Um, you could also trade off of Bed Bath and Beyond. They had their earnings. I mean, retail in general has been pretty crap. Um, but it has set up some nice levels. Like, look at yesterday's support here at these lows. This 1650 held a lot. A lot of volume went off in here, and it held really well. A lot of volume went off into the after hours, and it held really well. So this 1650 is going to be a level I'm watching, because if it does break that, then we're probably reapproaching these lows from the earnings, and then we'll probably continue. Or if we rebound off that, you've got a basing point uh, for uh, for some support. So... If you're interested in retail, it's probably one of the th cleaner, more technical plays on a day trading side of things. And uh, the last two stocks that I'll probably be watching, uh, Car. So the Avis Avis budget, you've had several uh, rental car companies kind of bursting out. Uh, CarMax got a little bit of a, a knockback with earnings, but this car recovered nicely. It's back up at highs. Uh, I want to see if this one bursts out and continues its run. Uh, kind of elevated, kind of overbought, but I could see it maybe getting a burst. Uh, I'm a little worried that RSI is kind of diverging, not making a new high here with it. So I'll have to watch that one closely. And then last one I'll mention is GoGo, because GoGo still showing life here. Uh, volumes holding relatively steady. I don't want to see that decline anymore. Uh, I don't know how long, much longer the market will watch it, but uh, we had the nice breakout day, had an inside basing day, and we're just kind of chopping higher. You have like a morning burst, move sideways, a little bit of a burst, move sideways. And last I saw before the close of after hours trading, we were sitting right up here at the highs. So I'll even just keep scalping these resistance levels in it. I don't care uh, if if I do happen to notice it. I didn't notice it for a lot in here, but uh, but you never know. Uh, we'll have to see. Other than that, there are stocks that are still setting up. I don't know if we get any of that stuff that I'm watching this week, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'll just set alerts, things like MU that had earnings, uh, things like Lucid that's been just kind of chopping around for the last week or two. Um, just, I'm keeping an, an eye on these guys, but I'm not expecting much. So I'll just set alerts and, and periodically check back in them. So Some of these may be affected by the market, Others, I'm really hoping, are going to be a little more independent, so uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, but that's really it. Other than that, you've got you know just the slew of economic data. It's not going to be much except for the, the big employment numbers. Uh, there's not much else, so hopefully it's a relatively quiet week if we're lucky. But uh, that is it. So, yeah, that's my market analysis, and that's the stocks.